Hey, welcome back to Upstream. We're on session three and we're gonna jump right into it. Sherry, if you wanna pick up where we left off. Well, I was thinking through uh, uh, during the break a little bit about the, the context that, w- that we started with, that these are the days of Noah and, and the Matthew 24 perspective on what's going on in our world as it relates to violence. I, I quoted at one point, verse 39, that they knew nothing about what would happen, meaning there was ignorance on the part of the, the violent people. And, and here's my point. Um, our culture, our, our people have forgotten some basic things. Number one, they've forgotten who God is. Who is he? What influence to, does he demand to have on their lives? We, we forgot as a society who we are again created with dignity and purpose we've forgotten uh, why we exist is there a purpose to human life and lastly where are we going as a per- as an individual and and, and as a as a culture our church has to preach and teach and and underscore those principles in the lives of our people we need to take our bible and tell people who god is and Sherry, I want to. I'm going to add a thought to that. Okay. Um, and this may seem a little oppositional, but not necessarily. I think it's an addition. We have to remember the Bible calls Noah a preacher, so he was communicating to the culture. But what is what Jesus is saying? They did not know. So part of this is a refusal to hear what Noah was saying. But my point is, there are too many examples of our churches. Um, you know, falling back on the 12 ways to be a better mommy, mm-hmm. six ways to be a better daddy. Mm. You know, I just had this conversation with a pastor friend of mine, and I listened to him every day. And I said to him, I said, um, you know why I've listened to you every day for 25 years? You have a very high view of God. You and have not fallen into the self-help how-to doctrine that most pastors preach today. So we can't look at violence and say, get the flashcards out and you know, slap them down in front of people and think that will solve the problem. Mm-hmm. What will solve the problem is if they see God as He is and they see themselves as they are in His eyes. And the reason why I brought up Noah um, was, and that he was a preacher, Noah didn't get discouraged. And I think that's why so many people have moved to self-help, because they are not seeing a response to the gospel, so they go to how to help humanity. Don't get discouraged in our violent world. Keep being a preacher of righteousness like Noah was, and don't allow discouragement to stop you from being and doing what you're encouraging and inspiring people to do right now. Part of the problem of the violence that's described for us in Genesis 6 and referred to in Matthew 24 is the idea that the the people had no thought of the judgment of God. They they weren't anticipating if my behavior is X, uh, Y is going to occur. That only comes by the preaching of God's word that we anticipate that, that connection. They were willfully ignorant of spiritual matters. That falls on us. Those of us that know our Bible, that preach it, teach it, mm. have it individually or as a corporate, corporate uh, approach with a church or a small group or a Bible study, that falls on us to bring people to that understanding. That's how we approach society change, is we draw people to who God is and, and who he's made us to be. Mm. Amen. Good. That's a great word, Sherry. Um, and I think we do that several ways. Um, one. I think we have to preach the gospel. We have to be vocal about repentance. And preach the gospel to ourselves. Hmm. The idea that we get up every morning and recognize who we are in Him and why. It affects our behavior throughout the day. You know, I don't know if you know the top title of the book. There's a great book that I read and I cannot remember the title. And the whole book is about preaching the gospel to yourself. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'll, I'll remember it after the podcast and I'm, I'll post it. Um, but it's a great book, and I think you are so right. We've got to remember, like Paul, we were lost and now we're saved, but we've got to be reminded of the good news of the gospel and what that has done for us and what it means to us. Then it's easy to communicate to others. And the purpose we have out of that. 
the, the purpose is not to sit in our bedroom and, and, and do gaming uh, 23 out of 24 hours. We have purpose and, and, and value before God, and it needs to be in, you know, interjected in our culture and where we live, in our families, in our work. Yeah, God so loved me that he died for me. And the person that I'm upset with at work, God so loved them as well. Mm -hmm. And exactly. I need to remember that. Ah, that's a great word. That's a great word. Um, I want I want to just talk a little bit further too about what do we look like as believers in this violent world, um, because it doesn't mean we are wimps. It doesn't mean we just lie down and we just we just take it. Um, one of the things that I said the the thing that Jesus asked us to do in the Sermon on the Mount, it takes someone as strong as Jesus marching up a cross after being beat forty times um, to die for the, for our sins. There's a lot of strength in a man that can carry a wooden uh, uh, cross beam up a hill. I mean, it's hard enough to walk up a hill, much less walk up a hill with a wooden beam after your back is raw. Think of the strength that it took by the Holy Spirit and by his own humanity to get up that hill. So Jesus is, just, is definitely not asking us to be wimps. Turn the other cheek has no wimp about it. Um, giving someone your cloak when they steal or take your tunic has nothing wimp about it. It has everything to do with self-control, everything to do with a lot of power and strength. It has everything to do with meekness. And what meekness is, is power under control. Mm -hmm. And it's under control of the Holy Spirit and allowing the Spirit of God. Um, I'll never forget a story that I heard in the Holocaust of a mom. And it's not a story that's published, but it's a story that uh, uh, I heard from a Holocaust survivor. She was there. And it was a, a, little, a mom and a girl, and the soldier was going to take the little girl, and it was time for the annihilation of the kids on this particular day. And so they were going to take the little girl. So the mom started kicking and scratching the eyes of the soldier and did not give up no matter how many times they beat her with the rifle. And while she was being beat, she was shoving her child in the back of the crowd and the rest of the crowd took the note and and pushed the child all the way in the back and saved her daughter that day but cost her life it's the daughter who tells the story that strength willing to lay your life down for the sake of another in the face of violence how much strength did it take for that mom to do that kind of act? Jesus is not calling Christians to be wimps. He is calling Christians to be the strongest kind of human in the midst of so much violence. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Lexi, I don't know what you would have to say to that because I think one of the reputations of the next generation is... Sorry, uh, your generation. Yes. My yeah. generation, yeah. Your, yeah. your generation. Because you're not the next generation no. to me and Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> To me, you are. Um, but I think the next generation has a poor reputation mm -hmm. when it comes to hard work, when it comes to actually putting feet to faith in a Christian context. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you seeing that in your friend groups? Do you see people who are passionate about going out and doing hard work for the gospel? It, and, you know, Pastor Chet, I think you said it well. It, it's preaching the gospel and it's living the gospel mm -hmm. in a way that's actually going to reach people. Yeah, I think my generation does have a reputation of not working hard because we have everything at our fingertips. You get the convenience of not just social media, but fast food, drive throughs everything. It's like you could just search it up on Google, so why do I need a book about it? And even just things like that, but like you said, walking it out, and I, I was reading earlier just this this key verse, a uh, couple of verses, um, that really shows our responsibility in how to not necessarily fight for vengeance, um, but how to meet with the opposition of the evil. It's uh, Romans 12, 17 says, repay no one evil for evil, evil. have regard for good things in the sight of men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink, for in doing so you will reap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Yeah, great word. That is a great word. And um, I, I want to take a little understanding to Jesus for just a moment. What about the turning of the table, Sherry? I mean, he was angry 
and it looks like a violent act. So he turned the tables in the temple, and some theologians believe he did it twice. And some theologians believe he did it to instigate his crucifixion. I'm going to get them upset so that they want to kill me. So he was actually inciting his own crucifixion. Well, the argument is that there's righteous indignation, that there is a time and a place for uh, emotional responses considerate to whatever the, the, the uh, crime is. And he certainly would be in a position to do that. I don't know that that is as violent an act. It's certainly not against an individual, to my knowledge. No one was physically hurt. Uh, and the Bible is very keen to mention that. Yeah, they, he did not whip, whip anyone. Anybody, he did not right. whip any animal. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's a poor example. Um, the one you mentioned earlier about uh, speaking to the fig, the fig tree. Yeah, he did kill off the figs, but again, I don't know that that's violence in the in the sense of our mm -hmm. our conversation. The the other comment I would make uh, to to Lexi's comment, you we are living in a in a comfort a comfort culture. And out of that comes the desire that everything should be my way. Mm -hmm. So when a guy cuts me off on the freeway, I go to my horn, or I, I call him a name. Or even as a Christian, my, my big cuss word for guys on the road is turkey jerk. Now, I have no idea where that came from, <laughs> but that's, that's what I holler at people. You turkey jerk. That sounds so... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. isn't it? And I think that because of that self-gratification thing we have this strong sense of justice that everything needs to be right everything has to as be as determined by you as right determined, exactly yeah. exactly the perspective is everything mm -hmm. what is right and if you mm -hmm. don't agree with my right i have the right to be violent against you i mm -hmm. i can burn the flag i can deface this building i can attack you uh yesterday when i saw the uh the um uh riots that were going on there was a video of a girl hitting the back of a police officer and then taken off. Like, I'm going to get you, but I'm not going to pay the consequence for it. I'm going to run. And they, mm -hmm. they ran after her and brought her down. So it's, you know, it's one of those things where I feel like we're, we're, we're trying, and it was such an example to me of, I'm going to be as violent as I want to be, but I'm not going to pay the price for it. Mm -hmm. um, what is the Christian's response? And the Christian's response is not wimpy. It is making, uh, uh, the, could you read, I don't want to uh, butcher it, the, could you read the last verse in regards to uh, violence? Do not overcome evil, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, I was angry, angry that there were children in the Liberian war being used to be rebel mm -hmm. soldiers. I was so angry about it, I turned some tables. I started a ministry that rescued 1,500 child soldiers. The Bible says be angry, just says do not sin. So be angry, do not sin means be angry and act like Jesus. Do something about sin in the world, even if it costs you your life. And to me, there's nothing wimpy about Jesus on that cross. He laid down his life for me, and that's the response of a believer in a violent world. And individually, it's an issue of self-control. It's an, it's an issue of you've irritated me at any level, minor uh, right through to more significant and i need to exercise self-control you know not me but you uh meaning the lord and that that's a message we need to practice as believers with each mm. other there's a great word that i think in regards to public self-control it's civility yeah that too. have civility do you guys like that word mm. have civility where you don't allow yourself to get to a place where you have to apologize for some behavior. Don't walk, don't have to say, I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry I acted like that. Self-control, when you feel that blood beginning to boil and you wanna become as violent as the person that's being violent with you, it's in that moment that I pray, Spirit of God, here I go, please help me out. Don't let me go there. Mm. Take over my life right now. Help me to submit to you. Well, and then there's the verse that talks about be swift to hear, quick to listen, but slow to speak. And we need the Spirit of God to do that sometimes. We need it in our marriages. We need it when we're talking to our children. We need it when we're talking to people at work because people can do and say things in our violent culture. They feel like they can say anything and do anything they want. And we live in a blame and victim culture. So they blame you and they're the victim for everything. So don't be their excuse. Purpose mm -hmm. to ask the Spirit in that moment so you don't have to apologize for something that you did later. 
good. Amen. Amen. I think that's a great way to wrap it up as far as what it looks like for us. Um, hey, we're praying for you as you choose to stand and choose to be a light that you would hear the words, hear the conversation and the word that's been read uh, and that you would take it and apply it. God bless you guys.